Hello. Welcome to Menger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss what information can be entered in the string and charger section on the battery impedance testing form. Let's get started. On the impedance test form, you would start off by entering information about the battery string under test. You would enter the name assigned to the battery string. You would enter the installation date of the string. You can enter the nominal cell voltage here. You can choose among three battery types. I'm going to choose vented lead acid. You can enter information about the duty cycle of the battery. So if my battery string is capable of providing 13 amps for a period, period of eight hours to an end cell voltage of 1.75 volts per cell, I would enter the information in this manner. Uh, this section gets populated when you download the impedance data from the instrument. Uh, but if you want to edit the values, you can edit that. So in what case would you edit the values? Would you need to edit the values? Let's say I ran the test on a 24 cell string. The way the data would look would be like this. I would be able to see number of jars, number of cells is 24. And I would say number of cells per jar is one. The number of straps would be 24 or 23, depending on the instrument that you're using. Uh, and that can be edited as well. Uh, now, if I was testing on a battery string, which was made up of eight jars and each jar consisted of three cells and I wanted to represent the data in that manner, then what I would do is I would edit these numbers. Now, when it says 24 jars, this is what the test table looks like. So I have a row for each jar and each jar has one impedance value since the number of cells per jar is one. If I was to edit this and say that the string consists of eight jars, then the number of cells per jar now changes to three. And on the test table, you can see that it says jar number one, and there are provisions for three impedance values, one for each cell. There is one cell for specific gravity for each jar. So that's how the test table changes when you change the number of cells per jar or when you edit the number of cells per jar. Hydrometer start skip cells uh, is for you to be able to modify the specific gravity column according to the way uh, in which you're going to be taking measurements. So if you're not take gonna if you're not gonna take specific gravity measurements on every cell or every jar on the battery string, then you can enter. Uh, the number of cells or jars that you would like to skip. So for example, if you're planning on taking specific gravity uh, measurement on one cell and then skipping the next two and then taking uh, the specific gravity measurement on the fourth cell, skipping two more cells and then moving on to the seventh cell, so on and so forth, then you can say start cell is one, skip cells two. You will see that it uh, it removes the specific gravity cells for two cells after every cell. So jar number one, you uh, the specific gravity rec uh, value will be uh, recorded here. No cells for jars two and three. Specific The next specific gravity value will be recorded for jar number four. No specific gravity values for jars five and six. The next specific gravity value gets recorded for jar number seven. So that's the string section. Moving on to the charger section. Charger section is where you can enter information about the battery charger on the system. There's a provision to enter information for an extra charger. So if your DC system has two battery chargers, you can enter information for each of those chargers. You can enter the manufacturer's name. You can enter the model. You can enter the charger uh, current. You can enter the charger voltage. You can enter the voltage when it's in equalization mode. Uh, the test parameters like the AC current uh, and the ripple current and the float current, 
these values will populate when the test data is downloaded from the instrument if you want to edit those or if they didn't populate and you want to enter the values in those fields uh, you can certainly do that so values that populate uh, from the test data uh, are editable in the string and charger section if you want to enter as found and as left values for float voltage and equalization voltage then you can certainly do that by checking on these boxes uh, each bo one box is available for each charger um, there is also another checkbox that says inspection data if you check on this box you can see additional checklists for battery inspection safety equipment so if you would like to um, use this section in your impedance test form you need to enable the uh, inspection data uh, you need to check on the inspection data checkbox here this concludes the video on what information can be entered in the string and charger section on the battery impedance testing form visit the mega youtube channel for more videos including technical webinars product overviews and other how-to presentations similar to this one Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.